This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used, for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this lecture on thermal unit operations, still distillation and rectification and today I would like to look at the rectifying and the stripping column. So the column, the overall process, contains either only a stripping part or only a rectifying part. In what I derive I will show you actually how the balances are set up for the rectifying column but for the stripping column it, everything works out in more or less identical Away. So, if I show you this, you should be able to do that yourself. Okay, how does such an equipment look like? This is shown here for the rectifying column and you see that we have the same diagram, you should know it actually, when, as we have seen already when we were discussing the distillation cascade. And um, thus we have only a certain number of theoretical stages towards the top of the column, towards the condenser, but the feed is directly being fed into the reboiler. Of course, we get a certain separation between the bottom and the top of the column because there we have again a certain number of theoretical stages and we have discussed how uh, far we can enrich our distillate when we discuss the um, cascade, the distillation cascade. So we know we get an enrichment of one of the components, but apparently down here certain things are different as compared to what we have derived previously for the McCaptile method for the rectifying uh, rectification column containing a rectifying as well as a stripping section. So here we have only a rectifying section. Well what we realize directly is of course that if we set up our balance for the uh, rectifying part then we can set it up more or less identically to that what we have set up for the rectification column. So we come up with a control volume which intersects the distillate flow rate and then intersects below some theoretical uh, stage, uh, state. Uh, yes, theoretical stage. And because of that, of course, the entering and leaving streams are identical to those that we have regarded in deriving the rectifying line that we know already. And so the rectifying line is identical to what we have derived. So we can look at that and that stays the same. So we don't have to rederive anything. On the other hand side, we realize that the situation down here is sort of different as compared to what we have seen previously. Okay. So what we should do now actually is to look again at the rectifying line on the other on the one hand side, on the other hand side, set up some balances for the bottom, for the reboiler, and see what that will lead us to. Well, for the rectifying line, well it's relatively simply. If we set up the balance, we know of course that the rectifying line, how does it look like? Well, first the headline, rectifying column. And we know that the operating line, the balance line for the rectifying column, rectifying section looks like that. The Yn plus 1i equals reflux ratio divided by reflux ratio plus 1. And of course, also in this rectifying column, we have a reflux ratio. You may have seen that or realized that. Times Xni plus 1 over reflux ratio plus 1 times Xdi. So we know that already and that is still valid also in this case. So we know how to construct that and I can show you how that looks like in the diagram. You know that of course you have your well, yx diagram. You define your xd for example as a given purity or as discussed previously you solve that from or determine that from some balances. So you have your xd specified here on the diagonal. You have find one point um, for constructing the rectifying line. The second point for plotting the rectifying line is on the y-axis as we have derived the xd divided by reflux ratio plus one. You can plot your rectifying line and then you can plot the steps 
where each of these steps corresponds to a theoretical stage. Okay, so down here you see already something about balances. You realize already the lever rule, but we of course have to derive that if we want to see where that is actually coming from and how it's formulated explicitly. So now we have to set up the balances to derive these equations relating to the graphical interpretation A, B and C that we have just seen in the diagram. And we want to set up the balance as usually. We can say that we are in steady state and want to set up the balance for the overall flow rates. Again, steady state means left side of the equal sign equals zero. I actually wouldn't have to repeat that. That's the general assumption if we are in uh, continuous processes. What is entering is the F dot. What is leaving is the bottom product as well as the top product, so minus B dot minus D dot. Then we have to set up the same balance or the corresponding balance for the flow rate of component I, and we know that we have to introduce the corresponding mole fractions for that, so zero equals F dot XFI minus B dot XBI minus D dot XDI. Okay, what are we interested in? We are interested in actually in something about, in some statement about the flow rates and corresponding the compositions. And in order to achieve that, what we do is we take this equation, solve it for the one of the flow rates, d dot or b dot, substitute it in the second equation, as we always do, we always take the overall balance, solve it for one of the flow rates, plug that into the second equation, and then we want to solve it for the ratio of the flow rates because we know that then we will reach in the end the lever rule. So solving that for example for d dot leads to d dot equals f dot minus b dot as expected more or less. If we plug that into the second equation we obtain 0 equals f dot x f i minus b dot xbi, that we don't have to substitute anything so far, then we substitute the d dot with a negative sign times the xdi, so it is a minus f dot xdi plus b dot xdi. And as already mentioned, what we want to do next is we want to um, sort that with respect to the flow rates and then come up with an equation relating the two flow rates on the one side of the equal sign and the compositions on the other side of the equal sign. So if we sort that by flow rates, we obtain f dot times xfi minus xdi. So this is this term and that term, and then we brought these two terms to the other side of the equal sign, so to speak, and so we have a b dot times xbi minus xdi. So equals b dot times x b i minus x d i. And we directly read from that, if we divide that appropriately, that b dot divided by f dot equals x f i minus x d i divided by x b i minus x d i. And we want to call that actually, uh, since we know it relates to uh, some length, some composition difference in the, um, uh, according to the lever rule in the yx diagram, uh, we want to call that a, this length of this line, and this b. So this is one of the equations determining uh, what is going on in the rectifying column. The second line that we can set up, the well, second relation, is that we could, instead of solving the overall balance for d dot and plugging it in, we could solve it for b dot and plug it in. Of course, then we obtain a ratio between d dot and f dot. And if you do that, you wind up with x b i minus x f i divided again by x b i minus x d i. The denominator is the same, so that's b as well. And the numerator is C in that case, or the, it's a diff, it's different from that, so we can call that C. So that is the second overall uh, balance. And you directly see that that corresponds to the lever rule because you see that the F dot 
corresponds to the entire length from the XB and the XD. And since, of course, the feed is split into um, two different flow rates, different compositions, the feed composition, of course, has to lie in between the distillate and the bottom product composition. That's for sure. So the XB minus XD is the maximum length. On the other hand side, you see that the difference from, uh, of the feed towards the concentration of the top product co corresponds to the bottom product flow rate. And the, X, uh, the feed difference with respect to the bottom uh, product composition corresponds to the top product flow rate. So it's directly visible that this is the level rule. Of course, then the B dot and D dot relate as a to C, I don't have to spell that out. If you divide these two equations, you would directly see that. So D dot with B dot divided by B dot is C divided by A, ordinary level rule, as we know it. And now we can interpret that from, from this line here. So uh, you realize, of course, uh, again, this is the same diagram as before. So the rectifying line has been plotted. XD had been specified, for example, or obtained from, from the overall balance and the specifications that have been given. And then we realize that the difference between XB and XD corresponds to the B to the overall length, which corresponds to the feet. So this corresponds to the feet, and that is split into two fractions, where this length C, correspond, uh, C corresponds to the distillate flow rate and the A corresponds to the bottom product flow rate. And of course, you realize, as always, the larger the purity that you want to achieve, the smaller is your flow rate. So if you want to shift the D with respect to the F to the right, then this is getting smaller. So that fraction is being decreased. And if you want to achieve a higher purity here, then this A will be decreasing, uh, of course, because then the uh, A is decreasing. So it behaves more or less as... It usually does. You can see on the other hand side in this diagram, if your feed is somewhere in the middle of the system, you can nevertheless achieve pretty pure compositions over here. So you can go up here to, to a more or less any extent and can have a significant separation from the bottom product. That is only defined by the number of theoretical stages that you see here. Yeah, and if you find an arbitrary large, uh, use an arbitrary large number of theoretical stages, you can really get pretty far down. But on the other hand side, you see, of course, that there is a certain limit to the purity. So if you would use an infinite number of uh, theoretical stages, and this is your distillate composition, then you can't get beyond that point. So you would the lowest XB is somewhere down here. Of course, if this XD moves up, so we have, if you have a higher distillate composition purity that you want to achieve, that will move to the right as well. And of course, that also shifts the balances, but the XB or the bottom product has still a significant flow rate and the distillate product, the, the distillate also has a significant product if the F, XF is somewhere in the center of the system. So from this diagram, you can directly read how the products change if you shift your requirements of the system or if you change the reflux ratio, for example, again, of same as before, you can, of course, change that and see that beyond or below a certain limit, you will not be able to pass uh, beyond XF. So all these con uh, considerations hold as well. And you also have to define your reflux ratio, of course, with respect to an uh, optimal uh, situation in that case. Okay, so that's that. I should mention that, of course, here you are feeding the feed into the bottom. So any differences in thermal state of the feed are compensated by the um, reboiler duty. So you don't have to discuss that uh, in that detail. It's just the compositions that play a role. You don't have to construct a Q-line, uh, intersection line for this, type, uh, for this type of characterization. Then I should mention, of course, that for a pure stripping column, so you only have the bottom section of the overall uh, rectification column, the same applies, the same balances, and of course you have to construct your um, 
balance line the opposite way. So you start out from your XB on the diagonal, have then your internal flow rate ratio uh, that is defined by the reboiler duty and then you can plot your uh, stripping line and that way you are able to describe in the similar way or same way more or less the column which is just a stripping column which is usually not so frequent. Uh, such rectifying columns are more frequent. For example, if you have some, uh, some reaction vessel and you want to remove some light boiling component from that reaction vessel to re uh, decrease, for example, product inhibition. Okay, so with that, we know all the balances. We know how to design it in the Mercatile diagram and with the balances and we should summarize what we have realized. We saw that, I've discussed that, rectifying and stripping columns are used if only one of the fractions is to be achieved with a defined purity or on the other hand side if it's, it's a very easy separation then you can also use that um, and you can depict the uh, process in the Mercaptile diagram quite easily. We have discussed that and you see the level rule as well as the corresponding balance line that allow you to design really what's going on in that equipment. With that I would like to th say thank you for this time and I hope to see you again in the next video.